USAID says that it cannot advise Congress of how many of its people are still trying to get out of Afghanistan. Sources tell CNN that USAID told members of the Senate and House Foreign Relations Committee uh, that it does not have a comprehensive list. Now, earlier this week, Secretary of State Antony Blinken told frustrated lawmakers he cannot give a precise number of Americans in Afghanistan who want to get out. Lawmakers also pressed Blinken about LGBTQ Afghans left behind. Kimali Powell is executive director of Rainbow Railroad, a global nonprofit that aims to help LGBTQ people facing persecution and is working to help Afghans escape. Thank you for being here. It has been a long journey to try to get you on this show. I thank you for being patient. Um, Kimali, we've talked a lot about women and girls and their future under the Taliban, um, but we have not focused enough on uh, LGBTQ uh, people there in Afghanistan, and the future for them is death. Uh, um, a Taliban judge was quoted in a German paper saying, for homosexuals, there can only be two punishments, either stoning or he must stand behind a wall that will fall down on him. Let's start with the reality of life for LGBTQ people in Afghanistan. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You know, the reality for LGBTQI people were very dangerous before the fall, uh, before the Taliban um, took over. Uh, Afghanistan is a country that criminalizes same-sex intimacy, which means that LGBTQI people could be persecuted even before the Taliban took control. And our fear is that um, the situation will be dire for individuals. We're already hearing reports of lists being circulated, uh, LGBTQI people being victims of attacks, and death threats already happening to people who are currently displaced in Afghanistan. What have you been doing to try to get people out of the country? And, and give us some idea of the numbers of requests and calls that you're getting. So Rabel Railroad is working with uh, Afghan nationals in the United States and other countries, civil society organizations, uh, and as many partners as possible to help people get out. Uh, up, up until the immediate withdrawal on August 31st, we were already uh, triaging over 200 people, names that we submitted to the U.S. State Department as well as the United Nations. Uh, since August 31st, that number has jumped to an additional 500 people. And so we're doing a couple of things. First and foremost, we're still looking at any immediate opportunities to help people evacuate. And we're calling on the U.S. State Department. Uh, Secretary Blinken said he heard about our 10-point plan. We need to follow up with the State Department to look at immediate evacuation opportunities. And then we have to shelter in place and protect people who are currently uh, gave everything they, they had to try to evacuate and make sure they could be safe. And then other countries, as well as the United States, have to do everything they can to help yeah. resettle individuals so they can be safe. Kimali, the, the idea of trying to extricate someone based on a specific um, trait that could get them killed if other people know what that trait is, I'd imagine that it's uh, uh, unbelievably difficult to identify people and not tell everyone around them why I'm, I'm pulling this person out. It's a really uh, sensitive and dangerous time for LGBTQI people at risk. You know, they're sometimes holed up with their family, other persons, or even them declaring that the members of the community can get them killed. So it's a really dangerous and sensitive information. It's what Rainbow Railroad does every day. We field three to 4,000 requests for help each year from multiple countries. So we have expertise in this area uh, and we're doing everything we can with our partners to make sure people are safe. And Kimali, um, you're speaking with us from Toronto. Canada has identified uh, LGBTQI people specifically that they want to prioritize to bring to Canada. Uh, there are members of Congress who say that the U.S. should do the same uh, by identifying them specifically. The importance of that classification uh, to, to highlight this population that needs to be pulled out. Talk about that. There are 70 countries that criminalize same-sex intimacy. And what that does is it places them in their country. And we're seeing that play out right now in Afghanistan. Um, in the midst of the turmoil, LGBTQI people are in imminent danger. And that's why there needs to be specialized programs to process them immediately into the United States. And Rainbow Railroad has the capacity to be an effective referring partner to the US government. 
Kimali Powell with Rainbow uh, Rail Railroad, uh, thank you so much for the work that you are doing for uh, LGBTQ uh, Afghans uh, and for people around the world. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much for having me.